extracting a module to a riser box, RBMT, running a pre-terminated customer box, CTB, to the riser box, RBMT. Welcome to the video tutorial on Prismian's Verticasa system. This video will detail on how to make a scallop in the cable sheath and extract a module to make a customer connection. A scallop will be made at the access level of the riser and the level above. The module will be cut and extracted via a breakout unit and drop tube to the riser box multi-tray. A pre-terminated customer termination box will be installed in the customer premises and the cable will be pulled back to the riser and spliced in an RBMT. Make a scallop using the Verticasa scalloping tool. Mark on the sheath where the access window should be. The length of the window should be about 50 mm. Make a scallop using the Verticasa scalloping tool. The scallop should be made over one of the ridges running along the cable to avoid cutting the strength members. Place the tool on the marked line and apply light pressure onto the cable to cut into the sheath. Pull the tool down the sheath and out. Installing the riser box multi-tray RBMT on a riser tray. To open the RBMT, push down on the top tabs and pull the cover off. The box can be placed on the riser tray with the cable running up the left or right hand side. The orientation is set by screwing the tray module in the correct position on the back plate. Place the riser box in the installation position. Remove the moulded tabs at the top and bottom of the box. For cables greater than 9mm, remove the tabs running up the side. For cables with diameter greater than 9mm, the tabs on the lid will also need to be removed. Place one or two cable ties at the bottom and top of the riser box so it can be secured to the cable. Place the riser box behind the cable ensuring the window is in a good position to extract a module. Cable tie the box onto the Verticasa cable. Secure the riser box to the riser tray using cable ties. The position of the cable ties can vary depending on the tray type. Place the cover on the box until module extraction is required. Installing the riser box multi-tray RBMT off the riser tray. To install the RBMT off the riser tray, a breakout unit should be used. The breakout unit houses the Verticasa window and with a drop tube transports a module to the RBMT. To install the breakout unit, first remove the blanking tabs where the drop tube will sit. If the Verticasa cable diameter is greater than 9mm, the larger cable tabs will also need to be removed. Feed two cable ties through the breakout unit so it can be tied to the cable. Align the breakout unit centrally over the window. Tighten the cable ties. Adjust the position of the cable ties if necessary and place the cover on. Now it is time to mount the RBMT. Begin by opening the lid. Some of the mounting holes are covered by the tray module. Unscrew the tray manifold and remove.
place the RBMT in its position. Mark the drill positions and fix later or mount the unit straight away. Screw the tray manifold back on, choosing the appropriate side. A pulling rope is included in the Verticasa drop tube. As the RBMT is generally placed close to the riser tray, a module can be rodded through the drop tube and so the pulling rope is not required. Push the drop tube into the holding position of the breakout unit. Run the tube from the breakout unit to the riser box. This may need to be run behind the riser tray to protect the tube. Choose the position you want to enter the box and remove the bottom tab with pliers. Place the drop tube into the slot and mark where the tube should be cut. This should be above the cable tie area. Cut the tube at the marked line. Apply two cable ties in the drop tube position. These are placed over the internal tabs. Push the drop tube into position and cable tie. Measure the required module length to the RBMT, including the splice length. Go up the riser and mark the correct window position. In most cases, this can be completed in the level above. At the window position, mark a 50mm window length. Make a scallop in the cable sheath using the Verticasa tool. Ensure the window is cut over one of the ridges on the sheath. Extract the module to cut using the scallop sheath piece. Cut the module with cutters. Go back to the lower level and locate the cut module. Pull the module out through the window. In most cases over a short length, the module can be fed into the drop tube. Depending on the fibre count, multiple modules can be inserted into the one drop tube. Loop the module in the RBMT for future splicing. Installing a pre-terminated customer termination box, Pizza Box, Mark 3. To install, take the Pizza Box to the termination point in the customer premises. Open the box and cut and remove the cable ties. Close the lid of the box. The yellow aramid yarns at the outer end can be tied to a pulling rope and pulled through to the riser. Remove the back plate from the packaging and place on the wall. For the Mark III version of the box, ensure that the orientation is set correctly based on the arrows marked. The Mark II version does not have an up and down orientation. Mark the screw positions or mount immediately. To open the customer termination box Mark 3, push down on the top of the box to release the tabs. The pre-terminated pigtails can be seen inside. The pre-terminated cable can be run out through any of the four sides following the cable guides moulded in the back of the box. Or the cable can be directed into the wall through the back of the box and back plate. To open the customer termination box Mark II, Unscrew the lid and push down on the top of the box to release the tab. 
the pre-terminated pigtails are located under the splice tray. The pre-terminated cable can be run out through any of the four sides following the cable guides moulded in the back of the box. The customer termination box can also be supplied unterminated. The box is opened in the same way and is usually supplied with a pigtail and adapter. To install, choose which direction the cable should exit the box. Pull out the appropriate blanking tab with pliers. In the case of the Mark III box, place it on the back plate, apply pressure and slide the box into place. For the Mark II box, refer to section 10. Attach a pulling rope to the cable aramids and pull back to the RBMT. Once the cable end is at the riser, bring the drop cable to the RBMT and choose which entry to use. Remove the blanking plate with pliers. Run the cable into position and mark where the sheath should be stripped back to. Measure the fibre length required for splicing and cut to length. Remove the drop cable sheath by making a ring cut at the marked line. Pull off the sheath, ensuring not to exert too much force on the fibres. Cut away the aramid yarns using aramid scissors, taking care not to cut the module. Place cable ties in the drop tube position. These are placed over the internal tabs. Tighten the cable ties onto the cable and secure the cable in place. Ensure to push the cable right up into place. Run the module around the internal guides for splicing later. Close the lid when finished.